This is r slash let's not meet, where third graders wield knives. When I was in third grade, there was this girl in my class. She wasn't particularly liked by anyone, as she was quite the bully and overall a rude person, even to adults. She was known to have anger issues and get mad at people for what seemed like no reason. I was no exception. Her name was Carly. She had been mean to me in the past, but that didn't deter me from going to her house one day after she had been nice to me all day at school. Naive, I know. So before leaving school that day, I called my mom to ask if I was allowed to go to Carly's house. She said yes and to call her when I get there so I can give her the address. Now, when I think back, I wonder if she had a bad feeling about the situation since she doesn't normally ask for the address. And she isn't picking me up since Carly's house was about two blocks away. When I got there, after calling my mom, of course, Carly insisted on making me look pretty, aka wetting my hair and brushing it. I let her. Then she told me to close my eyes and that she was taking me to the living room. I closed my eyes and she began to guide me towards the bathtub. We were already in the bathroom, so the tub was about two solid feet away from where we were standing. I opened my eyes just enough to see where she was guiding me. My foot hit the side of the tub and I said that this didn't feel like the living room. She said that it was and that I just need to step over the gate. I tell her that I know this is the bathtub. She stops trying to get me into the tub and brings me to the kitchen instead. She says she is going to make cereal. I was standing behind her when she reached into the dishwasher and said she was grabbing a spoon. The way that she clarified that she was grabbing a spoon immediately told me what she was really going to grab, and it was for sure not a spoon. I can still remember the feeling of dread that overcame me when she said those words. She pulls out a large knife and backs me up into a counter, holding the knife only inches from my neck. I can't remember if any words were exchanged during this, Maybe I was just too shocked to say anything. I only stayed there about maybe 30 seconds before I pushed her aside and ran towards the door. I grabbed my backpack and put on my winter boots. By the time I had my boots on, Carly was trying to block the sliding door. I pushed past her again and flung open the door. I ran down her patio steps and out of her front gate, not bothering to close it. I just wanted to get home to where I was safe. I remember her yelling at me as her dogs escaped through the open gate. I didn't care. One of her neighbors who was in their front lawn waved and smiled at me, clearly oblivious to what had just gone down. I ran down the road into my house, not stopping once. It wasn't until I was in the door of my house that I broke down. I began to cry and yell for my mom my two older sisters yelling at me to shut up. My mom walked over to me and immediately knew something was wrong. I explained what happened and she was very understanding and freaked out. I can't remember if it was the same day or the next day that I had to talk to the police officer about what happened. He asked me what kind of knife it was and whatnot. I think my mom relayed most of the story to him because I don't remember having to say much. They got in contact with Carly's foster mom and Carly got in big shit for it. At school, Carly yelled at me for getting the cops involved and tried to guilt trip me by saying that her mom threatened to put her back in foster care if she did anything like that again. I told her I didn't care. The school was also notified of the situation and the teachers made sure to keep an extra eye on her, but that didn't mean I wasn't paranoid around her. I made sure to keep my guard up for the rest of the school year. Which was true, she had it coming. I always thought that it was a bit extreme to involve the cops, but I ended up making Carly never mess with me again. I ended up moving after that for unrelated reasons, only to move back before I started sixth grade. The first day of middle school, I was awaiting for them to call my name so I know which class is my homeroom when I hear an all too familiar name. Carly her last name. I watch as no one goes up to join the class. Was she not here? Next, I was called. 
I go up to join the class she would have been in. I found out later when the teacher was doing attendance that she had moved three hours away just before the beginning of the school year. It's been three years since then, and I can only hope she doesn't come back. But if she does, I'm not too concerned. Because if she does, I will make sure that she stays the fuck away from me. That incident has given me some trust issues, but at least now I know to choose my friends wisely. I don't know if you guys were able to tell or not, but that was a pretty big strain on my voice. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a few two-sentence horror, and then we're going to be done, okay? I'm still slightly under the weather. I watched my son rocking back and forth as the other children played in the garden. I've been warned the cloning process might not bring him back exactly as he was. Just like every night, I turned off the living room lights, ran up the stairs to my room, and quickly locked the door behind me. This time, it was waiting for me inside. Is there a god? asked the scientist after their AI achieved superintelligence. There is one now. I'm so hungry I can eat a whole bag of kibble. Too bad Master's been asleep for the last two weeks. Hopefully he gets up and feeds me today. As I walked through the old abandoned factory, the mannequins were kind of scary. I'm even more scared now. I don't know where they've all gone. She said last time we were stuck in a time loop, which really pisses me off because that's what... As I opened the window, I heard the joyous laughter of kids coming from the park. I won't ever take the night shift again. I shouldn't have tried out my new night vision goggles when the tour guide switched the cave lights off. Now they know I knew they were there. Okay, and that's it. So this Saturday, I'm going to go ahead and reveal new channel art, and we'll have a Q&A as well. Go ahead and tweet at, comment, or email me if you want to hear anything specific this Saturday. Well, that's it for me. Have a great night.